Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to spend some time talking about some rumors associated with the upcoming Doctor Strange movie, Moon Knight Villains, Snake Eyes, Vision, and so much more. Stay tuned. So if the rumors are true, Marvel is starting to get things back on course with regard to production associated with their various movies and also TV shows. But what comes along with those rumors that things are moving forward are all the rumors about the movies and who's actually going to be in them. And with the Doctor Strange movie and this whole idea of the multiverse, the rumor mill is working overtime. And one of the biggest rumors is that Tom Cruise is going to be Iron Man in an alternate universe, he is going to take up the mantle of Iron Man. Who knows whether that is true or not, but that is one of the rumors that is out there. There are also some rumors about the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, specifically with the FF. There are some people out there that are saying that Emily Blunt is going to be playing Sue Storm, and then when it comes to Wolverine, they're saying that Edward Norton, who was once the Incredible Hulk is now going to be Wolverine. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what actually happens. If anything that I've just said piques your curiosity, you definitely want to take a look at this blog post. The link down in the description. So in this most recent blog post, the blogger continues to talk about characters who are essentially almost famous. And in this one, they talk about a character that is associated with Kang the Conqueror that has the potential to actually show up at some point in a streaming service or movie as well. And it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty good way to kind of think about speculation. If you can't get the main person, think about those people that are in the periphery. And so for his part, the blogger identifies a character by the name of Terminatrix. And this is actually the love interest of Kang the Conqueror who made an appearance in Avengers issue number 23. And this is kind of like the whole Thanos obsession with death, right? So Kang the Conqueror has an obsession with this princess who, you know, rebukes him and has no interest in him and actually fights against him uh, teaming up with the Avengers. But the blogger highlights several books that are associated with this character that you may want to pick up. Again, if you haven't been able to pick up something associated with Kang the Conqueror, this could potentially be a good path for you. The link to this blog post down in the description, check it out, read it for yourself and decide whether this is something that you want to pursue. Just like that last post, this next blogger takes a hard look at some books out there that you potentially could pick up. That is if you haven't been able to pick up the true first appearance of Moon Knight, which is Werewolf by Night issue number 32. If you haven't been able to pick up that book, these books that are mentioned in this blog post could present you with a good opportunity. The blogger takes a hard look at several different books that are associated with villains who could show up and oppose Moon Knight in the MCU, in the streaming service. And so uh, I'm not going to talk about all three of the books that are mentioned in this specific post, but I will highlight one of them for you. I specifically want to highlight Moon Knight issue number 25, and this book came out in 1982. Now, this is the first appearance of Carson Knowles. 
And Carson is actually a character by the name of Black Spectre. And what's interesting about him is that he's a super villain at night and during the day he actually is a politician. Yeah, villain at night, politician in the day. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna say anything else about that one. The blogger goes on to talk about a few other villains and books that might be of interest to you. The link to this blog post down in the description. Check it out. So without a doubt, Vision will be appearing in the upcoming WandaVision TV show on Disney+. Plus. There is no doubt about that. There's really no speculation, right, to be had, if you will, because his name is literally in the title, and so he is going to show up. The blogger, however, identifies a couple of books that you may want to consider picking up, and these, in my opinion, are some pretty awesome books that are very much associated with the Vision and or could be associated with the WandaVision TV show. The first book that the blogger talks about is honestly one of my favorite covers. It is a gorgeous red cover. And you might know this book. Uh, and if you don't, if you don't, you will very, very soon. The book that I'm talking about is Avengers issue number 57. And this is the first appearance of the Silver Age Vision. This is a gorgeous cover. And right now, a 9.0 of this book has an FMV of around $1,000. A 7.5 has an FMV of $425. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know if this book will skyrocket in value as a result of Vision appearing in this TV show, right? And he's already been in the MCU, and so this is a continuation of his character appearing in, in popular media. So I don't know that the value of this book is suddenly going to spike, but it is a really awesome book to have in your collection. If you are a Vision fan, an Avengers fan, a fan of Silver Age books, this is not a bad book to pick up. But if you've seen the trailer that has come out for the WandaVision show, this next book could be of interest to you. And I say that because I do believe that the TV show has taken a lot of its cues from this next series that I want to mention to you. And I'm specifically talking about Vision issue number one and this was tom king's run on the vision where he basically put the vision in a family setting right an android that doesn't really have emotions now has a family the fmv associated with this book vision issue number one at a 9.8 is sitting around 170 dollars and as the blogger points out in this blog post this may or may not be a book that skyrockets in value, but it is a cool book, again, to have in one's collection. And if nothing else, it's a great book to actually read. The link to this blog post down in the description. Check it out. And again, these are just cool books to have in one's collection. So check it out and then decide for yourself if these are books that you want to pick up. This next blogger does a really good job of identifying a couple of books that you may want to look into. And the blogger specifically talks about books that are associated with Snake Eyes. And this is important because a Snake Eyes origin movie is coming to the big screen at some point in the future. And as a result of that, there are books that are associated with Snake Eyes that will potentially heat up. One of them is The Silent Issue, the very popular silent issue. But outside of that book, there are a couple of books that will probably be used as source material for the movie. Why? Because these books are the origin story of Snake Eyes. So the movie is about his origin and there are at least two books that are associated with his origin that you may want to check out. 
So you you want to take a look at this blog post and you also want to give thought to are there some other G.I. Joe related books that you could pick up? The link down in the description. There is a ton of speculation right now around what is going to happen with the Black Panther movies. And there's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen because of the untimely death of Chadwick, the main actor for the Black Panther. And there are a lot of people that immediately assumed that Shuri, his sister, was actually going to take up the mantle of the Black Panther in the movies the same way that she did in the comics. And because of that, a couple of books associated with Shuri have suddenly spiked in value. But there could be some that aren't necessarily spiking just yet that you may want to check out. I'm only going to mention one of them because I definitely want you to read the blog post. But the very first book that the blogger talks about is the standard cover, Black Panther issue number one. And the blogger points out here that in 2017, a 9.8 of the standard edition actually jumped from about $30 to $132. And then once the Black Panther movie hit the theater, that same 9.8 climbed up to $400 and has continued to actually increase in value. Now with that said, there are a couple of other books from that Black Panther issue number one, like a wraparound cover and another variant or two that aren't necessarily climbing in value the same way that the standard cover has. All of the details on these books are contained in the blog post. The link to it is down in the description. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another recap. I hope that you enjoyed this recap. And if you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. And if you truly enjoyed yourself, I want to invite you to come back next week when we get to do this all over again. <laughs>